Good afternoon. It's a great day to be a mountaineer, particularly if you have snow tires and four-wheel drive, but I do appreciate you braving the weather and uh, making it over here. Uh, I'm extraordinarily excited today to uh, let you all know that Dana Holgerson uh, will be joining our coaching staff as offensive coordinator for the 2011 football season. I know uh, all of you here have done your homework and you know about Coach Holgerson and, uh, and what his offenses have done. Uh, but as someone who really loves the college game and as an old quarterback, I feel obligated to uh, highlight some of his accomplishments because they really are unbelievable. Yeah, I think as many folks know, he uh, just finished this season as Oklahoma State's offensive coordinator and serving under Coach Mike Gundy. He took over an offense uh, that was 61st in the nation, total yards, and uh, had a first-year quarterback, a young man named Brandon Whedon, finished the season number one in total offense, moved up 60 spots in the national ranking. And a statistic that I find amazing, which is that uh, his quarterback, Brandon Whedon, his running back, one of his running backs, Kendall Hunter, and Justin Blackman, the Blitnikoff Award winner in one of their, one of their receivers, became only the second trio in NCAA history to pass for at least 3,000 yards, run for more than 1,500 yards, and have a receiver that caught more than 1,500 yards uh, or, or caught passes with more than 1,500 yards of receiving in the same season. Second trio in NCAA history. And I think for our players, guys like Gino and Tavon and Brad Starks, Sean Alston, uh, I think they uh, should, be, should be very excited about what kind of an offense they'll be playing in uh, come, uh, come next season. It's a great opportunity for them. Uh, prior to his one year at Oklahoma State, Coach Holgerson was at the University of Houston in 2008 as the offensive coordinator there serving under Coach Kevin Sumlin. Uh, he finished third in the nation. Uh, averaging 562 yards a game, scoring over 40 points a game. In his second year at uh, U of H, he, was two, he finished number one in the nation, uh, 563 yards per game, over 42 points uh, per game. And uh, the Cougars ranked number one nationally in passing offense, number one in total offense, number one in scoring offense. And of course, they had a great quarterback down there in Case Keenum. I think, as you all know, prior to his two years at the University of Houston, he was at Texas Tech in the South Plains, a beautiful Lubbock. Uh, coached there for eight years, three of which he was offensive coordinator there. Of course, he served under uh, Mike Leach, who is uh, one of the most ingenious offensive guys in the, in the country. And uh, in Dana's first year at Texas Tech, he finished fourth in total offense. In his last year at Texas Tech, he finished third in total offense in the nation. Of course, I think, as you know, they have, a, 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 have had a variety of quarterbacks out of Texas Tech. Uh, that have done remarkably well. What I find amazing is that he's had this production at three different schools, of course, two of which, Oklahoma State and Texas Tech, are in a very tough conference, uh, the, Big, the Big 12. The combination of this high-powered, high-octane offense along with what I think is one of the great defensive staffs in the country, I think, puts us in a mar remarkable position. Jeff Castile has done a remarkable job this past year, ranked second in scoring defense in the nation, second in rushing defense in the nation, third in total defense in the nation, second in opponent, third down conversions. You know, he and Coach Dunlap, Coach Kurlavich, Coach Lockwood have built a tremendous defense. They're punishing, they're physical. And I think the combination of that defense along with this high-powered, high-octane offense under the leadership of Coach Bill Stewart gives us a lot of excitement about the 2011 season. Let me share a thought or two, if, if I could, on the transition year, uh, uh, which is next season. And uh, what I expect and what I've shared with uh, our coaches is that I expect a smooth, in a very professional transition. And I have no doubt that we'll accomplish that because our guys are very professional guys. I've spent some time looking at various transition models in our industry within college football. And there are really two that we are using as models for our transition. And let me share uh, what those two models are. Uh, first of all, uh, the model that uh, very impressive, almost very similar to ours, almost exactly like ours, is at the University of Wisconsin back in 2000 and 2005 and 2006 when Coach Barry Alvarez, one of the great Big Ten coaches of all time, segued out uh, in favor of Coach Brett Bielema. And uh, Coach Bielema had a one-year timetable, date definite. 
Uh, Coach Alvarez's last season was 2005 with the Badgers. They finished with a 10-3 and record, ranked 15th in the nation, won the Capital One Bowl. Coach Bielema moved into the head coaching position in 2006. In his first year, the Badgers finished 12-1, and 12-1, and ranked number 5th in the nation, won the Capital One Bowl. A very successful transition, and I've had the good fortune of uh, getting to know Coach Bielema over the last couple of weeks and uh, uh, have learned a little bit about that, that transition. Very impressive. The other transition model that we've looked at and we're going to model ourselves after uh, is also extraordinarily successful, and it's at the University of Oregon. Uh, Chip Kelly, I think as many of you know, came to Oregon in 2007 to join Mike Bellotti's staff. Chip had been the offensive coordinator at the University of New Hampshire. He was named coach in waiting in 2008 and became head coach in 2009. Mike Bellotti, uh, someone whom I've gotten to know over the last uh, year or so because of my frequent trips to the West Coast. Mike Bellotti's last year was 10-3. and three. The Ducks won the uh, Holiday Bowl, ranked in the top 10 that season. Chip Kelly's first season, which was, of course, 2009, last year, uh, the uh, Ducks finished 10-3, and three, won the Pac-10 despite losing to Stanford, and finished number 11th in the nation. And if you look at both of those programs, Wisconsin and Oregon, programs that we want to model ourselves after, they are today two of the most successful programs in the nation. Of course, Wisconsin going to the Rose Bowl ranked uh, fifth, if I'm correct, and Oregon obviously playing for the national championship game. So uh, I think that uh, this transition year uh, will be a very valuable year for Coach Holgerson, be a very valuable year for Coach Stewart, an opportunity for Coach Holgerson to learn from a very experienced Bill Stewart, and I think an opportunity for Coach Stewart to learn from uh, Coach Holgerson, who, of course, uh, runs this high-powered, high-octane offense. Let me briefly touch on, on the future. You know, I want us, I want our Mountaineer program and expect us to compete at the highest levels. And my goal certainly and the goal of our program is to win a national championship. In order to do that, we have to win obviously Big East championships. And as I look out on the horizon, what I see is a rapidly improving Big East by and large because of the addition of Texas Christian University in 2012. TCU has a tremendous program, ranked number three in the country, playing in the Rose Bowl against those Wisconsin Badgers. And I think the addition of TCU is going to raise the bar for all of us in the Big East. And we need to respond to that and prepare ourselves because I believe eventually the road to the Big East Championship will go through Fort Worth, and we need to be prepared to go ahead and beat a team like TCU on the road to claim a Big East Championship and get to uh, national championship consideration. Obviously, I also think, uh, as many Big East uh, athletic directors and football and basketball coaches think, that the addition of TCU will open up some recruiting areas for us down in, uh, in the state of Texas. Do we think we'll get seven, eight, nine guys a year out of Texas? No, because of the geography. But I do think we can begin the process of identifying top players in Texas and Oklahoma and throughout the Southwest that will be, uh, you know, be good players for our program here. Let me thank Bill Stewart for what he is doing for West Virginia University for the football program. You know, he took over at a very challenging time back in 2007 and, uh, you know, acted as the consummate professional, calmed the waters, and has done a marvelous job leading our team. And I think because of his professionalism, I have all the confidence in the world that our transition year will work uh, very smoothly. You know, I look forward to having two great coordinators, Coach Dana Holgerson, Coach Jeff Castile, led by a great West Virginian and a great person, Bill Stewart. And I'm very much excited about certainly the, uh, the 2011 season and beyond uh, because I think uh, we will have uh, one exciting brand of football uh, here at Mountaineer Field beginning in, in 2011. I would be happy to uh, answer any questions. Could that, do you see the possibility of that creating some strain next year when these guys have to work together? No, I really don't. I think uh, Bill Stewart, again, is a consummate professional. I think our coaches, Jeff Castile on the defensive side as a coordinator, Dana 
and uh, whatever offensive coaches will be retained, whatever new ones brought in, I think uh, they're professionals. I've got all the respect in the world for coaches. And uh, after some of my conversations with coaches who went through some of those transition years, I think we won't have an issue. What, what is the situation with the current assistant coaches, both for 2011 and 2012? It's my understanding that defensive coaches are pretty much guaranteed their jobs next year. What about the offensive coaches? And then what about the entire staff when uh, Holgerson takes over in 2012? The uh, defensive coaches, I think, have done a marvelous job. And uh, Coach Castile and I have had a number of conversations. And uh, I know Coach Stewart has talked to Coach Castile. And my hope and expectation is that all of our defensive coaches return for, for a long period of time, not just for next year but beyond. I think they've done a great job and have built, again, this punishing physical defense that uh, really typifies the type of team we are. On the offensive side of the ball, Coach Holgerson will have authority, autonomy over the offense, in consultation with Coach Stewart, of course. Uh, he is in the process of talking to the offensive assistants today, uh, but at the end of the day, it will be Coach Holgerson's call about which assistants are retained and what new assist assistant coaches on the offensive side he may bring in. In the same way for the defensive coaches beyond next year? No. The defensive coaches, as I said, I think have done a marvelous job. I hope those defensive coaches stick around for a long, long time. I think they're some of the best defensive coaches in the country. They're all on rolling contracts. All those contracts for the defensive side will get rolled over because I think we've got a tremendous core of defensive coaches. Did you have a personal relationship with Holgerson uh, in Houston, or did you just know him by reputation with both of you? I first met Dana Holgerson on November 23rd of this past year. I uh, knew of him, of course, having lived in Houston, being a follower of college football. I knew of him before he ever got to the University of Houston, but uh, didn't meet him until, two, until November 23rd of this year. Uh, yes. Was it on a coaching search or was it just happened to be in Stillwater, Oklahoma, or Shazam? I was in Kansas City <coughs> for uh, the induction of Jerry West into the uh, College Basketball Hall of Fame and uh, made uh, a side trip uh, a little bit south and a little bit west to, uh, to visit with him. Again, on a coaching search, that kind of thing? Or? I made a visit to talk to, uh, to a coach who I thought was one of the great uh, offensive coaches in the nation. Oliver? Yes, sir, Mickey. Uh, do you know another school that fired a football coach uh, that and had won three consecutive uh, nine win seasons? I don't. I'm not sure what what the rel. I don't know if that's relative to our situation here, since Coach Stewart is not being is, fired. Is that not acceptable? These, uh, is, it, is that not acceptable at West Virginia University? Your alma mater, mine anymore. My goal is to win a national championship. I'm sorry? My goal is to win a national championship at West Virginia University. How, how, many, how many other schools are in, a, in Division I? 120? I th yeah, I think, give or take, yeah, there's 120 schools. Well, in the fact, but have you told this new guy that he's going to have to win at least 10 every year, if not 11 or 12? I have not said that to. I'm sorry? I have not said that to Dana Holgerson. I have not, correct. Well, you have, let's say he doesn't win nine in a row. Uh, is, is, is his job going to be on, on, uh, on, on the uh, chop block? We'll cross that bridge when we get there, Mickey. Uh, uh, Mr. Oliver, uh, we first started finding out bits and pieces about this the first part of the week. Did you offer up any information as to when Coach Stewart became aware of the situation? Sure. Uh, Coach Stewart and I met along with Coach Stewart's advisor and our university general counsel uh, on uh, – November 14th, I believe it was, the Sunday after the Cincinnati game. And at that point, Coach Stewart was informed that, that I was not satisfied with the direction that the program was going and that uh, changes would be made. No. Not right after the Connecticut game. Mr. Holgerson has signed a letter of intent term sheet uh, yesterday, which uh, is a, a six-year contract, one year as offensive coordinator, and then five years as head coach. And can we get a copy of the letter of intent today? Would you that? I'll, I'll, I'll have to check with our general counsel's office, but I'm sure at the appropriate time it'll be released. Oliver, is there anything with uh, Coach Stewart now as far as a new agreement, uh, or is he still working under his old agreement? And 
when he steps down after next year, will he still be working under that agreement, or has he agreed to do something different? Coach Stewart, Coach Stewart's agreement has been modified, and that uh, modification came at the November 14th meeting that uh, Coach Stewart and I had, along with his advisor and along with uh, our general counsel here at the university. And he agreed to that? Yes. And it, so on November 14th, he knew that he would be the coach for only one more year? The agreement called uh, for two options, one of which was uh, Coach Stewart resigning after this season, the second of which was Coach Stewart staying on for next season. And obviously, we've uh, decided on the option of him staying on for next season as our head football coach. Do you have any idea what he will do after next season? You say administrative duty. No, I think we'll, we'll, you know, we have an agreement that uh, we'll sit and talk at the appropriate time and see what Coach Stewart would like to do, what his interests may be, what services we may need here within the department. Uh, but we've not talked in specifics about that. Well, we're aware of the offensive or defensive assistants around that November 14th. <clears throat> No. Well, I, 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 can't, I can't speak to their mental awareness. Uh, certainly, I, I did not speak with, with, uh, with the coaches that at that point. Boss, that yes. Okay. Uh, and then regarding Mr. Holder's contract, is there, is, is there a liquidated damages provision in there for some time? Well, this, this, this is a term sheet, and the, the terms will get fleshed out into a full-fledged contract. So at, at this point, I'd rather not discuss any of the terms in this contract until we, we get a full-fledged uh, contract signed. But he has, he has signed off in the term sheet, as I has remember, the university. If you all run a, back, uh, a, uh, a, a check uh, on the character check on this new guy. We've run the background check that we run uh, for you know, major senior leadership positions at the university, a check that was run on me or President Clemens yes. or others. Yes, yes. The, the responsibilities that the head coach will have in the 2011 season, I think, really are no different than the responsibilities in the 2010 or 29 or 28 or whatever season. Uh, I think every coordinator uh, you know, runs his, or her, his side of the ball. Jeff Castile has historically run his side of the ball and done it very well, and certainly some input from Coach Stewart. I, I don't sit in on the coaches' meetings, so I can't tell you what exactly the input is. I think. Offensively, same thing applies. So I, I don't see the the responsibilities divvied up in any in any different way than they have been in the past. Stu have the right to overrule them. I guess is what I'm saying. If, if, if let's say Stu won Clark in the game, and I think those are all decisions that that are mutually agreed upon during the week, and certainly on game day of the headsets. I, I I'm I'm reluctant to to answer a specific hypothetical. Number one, because it's a hypothetical. Number two, because well, I'm just I don't. Who, who really, who really is running the team? Bill Stewart's the head coach. There's no question about that. Dana Holgerson's the offensive coordinator, just like Jeff, Cast, uh, Jeff uh, Mullen was this past year. And so, uh, sure. Not on, not on that line, but you said that Bill signed something on November 14th. He made some comments about the Eastern Illinois game. Is that something that's going on there? 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 Is that something that's going on yeah, I, I don't don't read many many of the reports, so I'm not sure I even saw that. Yes. So who is going to be making decisions related to the program, uh, whether it be for next year or for the future? Obviously, any decisions that affect recruiting or Bill Stewart. Bill's our head coach, and as I'm sure he he does now in consultation with his assistant coaches. I don't see that dynamic changing whatsoever. Have Bill and, and Dana Holgerson talked at all or at length about their relationship and how they're going to work together? They've they've spoken. They've met. I I don't know. I've been part of some of those conversations. I'm, I, so I've, they've talked about a, a variety of topics, and I'm sure those topics came up uh, as, you know, as would you expect when coaches get together and they talk about how they want to operate and do things, et cetera. Oh, I, the players made, made uh, I, I have not spoken to the players. That's uh, the head coach's responsibility. So I, I, I don't know, you know if or when Coach Stewart or with whom he's communicated in terms of the, of the players. I do know the players have had finals. They're scheduled to have their first practice session, first bowl practice on Saturday. But I, I don't know the answer to that. You don't have a contract yet, but do you have an inclination toward whether you will include a buyout clause in that contract? I'd rather not answer that. We're still looking at that. Uh, you mentioned some of the, the models you've studied and client largest who have a successful foot. Now that you have this done, this is the first step. What, 
fundamentally has to happen so they can, they can reach that level where those two programs have made that step right away. What's characteristic of that to be the same here? Well, I think uh, those transitions were handled very professionally in a very transparent fashion. They uh, were very comprehensive and inclusive. Uh, the folks that I've spoken to and have gotten to know over the years, whether it's Chip Kelly or Mike Bellotti or Brett Bielema, they're all very quality people. I think uh, we have the same opportunity there. I think Bill Stewart's an incredibly smart, good person, good quality person. I think very sincere, loves this university, wouldn't do a thing to harm it. I think uh, Coach Holgerson, as many of you will get to know soon, is a very smart, uh, aggressive, young coach and uh, I expect nothing other than both of those guys and others on the staff handling it very professionally. So I've got really no doubt that uh, it'll be handled professionally as well as was handled in the Oregon and in the, uh, in the uh, Wisconsin situation. Those are all date definites and that's I think the, the key metric that differentiates those transition models from some of the others that have been out there whether it's at Texas or Florida State or others where they're you know a coach and waiting waited. Very instrumental in this. What, what's your response to that? I'm, I have the responsibility for this athletic department. The president of the university has entrusted me with the department. Uh, he's my direct report. He's the guy I talk to. I do have conversations with a variety of people. I'm not sure what a big donor is. I know a lot of people contribute to the Mountaineer Athletic Club. We have people that contribute you know, seven-figure sums and people that contribute three-figure sums. And I talk to a lot of those folks. But at the end of the day, I can tell you that I make the decisions that I feel are the best for this program and for the university. Do you have cooperation with the president? Oh, absolutely. I, I don't make any major move without consultation and cooperation and sign-off from President Clemens and other senior staff members. I didn't believe that we had an opportunity to win a national championship with the direction of the program. I mean, any specifics there? Uh, well, defensive style, character? at the end of the day, results matter. And uh, we, weren't, we weren't getting the results. And I think, the, as many of you know, as I've said before, there's also a financial component to this. Uh, we, our season ticket base has declined uh, from uh, Coach Stewart's first year to the to, uh, to uh, the present time, uh, we've had, uh, I think, only two crowds since 2004 under 50,000 at Mountaineer Field. Both of those took place in the last couple of years. Can you blame the weather? Sure. Uh, but that, to me, is an indication that uh, our fans aren't satisfied with, uh, with the product, and that factors in as well. Uh, the decision was mine, and that decision was made uh, at, at the conclusion of the season. Okay, I thought Coach Stewart did a marvelous job towards the second half of the year. Uh, we went on a, a, a great win streak, and I thought he deserved uh, uh, the, the head coaching position for the 2011 season. And of the people that you may have had in mind as a replacement, was Holgerson at the top of that list, or was it just on the list? Uh, I think Dana Holgerson is one of the great coaches right now in college football. And as I looked at a guy like Dana Holgerson, I thought to myself, he'll be a head coach somewhere very soon, and I wouldn't want to prepare against his offense. And I wanted him to be at this university, to lead us in the long term, and uh, that's, that's, that was my thought process because uh, he is, I think, one of the great outstanding coaches in college football today, and I wanted him here at WVU because I do think he can lead us to a national championship. Was your hand forced at all with his possibility as a candidate for the, for the head coaching job? No. I mean, uh, these, listen, these coaches who are in demand, uh, you know, uh, I, I think have lots of opportunities all, all across the board. And uh, there are all sorts of schools that uh, were interested in, in Coach Holgerson. And uh, I didn't worry about that. I wanted him to uh, feel comfortable with West Virginia, feel comfortable with our facilities and stadium and what we have here in our fan base. And uh, he did. I think he believes, and this is the reason he uh, decided to come here, he believes we can win a national championship. And that's our goal. Has he ever been here? Yes. 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 He has seen our facilities and, and uh, you know, appreciates Morgantown. It reminds him of his hometown in Iowa. Yeah, flying commercial. What do you expect him to be 
back in town and, and to meet with the team and his at this point, uh, our, our, our group is trying to arrange something for early next week, and I'm not sure we know at this point. We'll get back to you on that. But uh, we're hoping to have uh, Coach here, Coach Holgerson and Coach Stewart uh, here probably at some point uh, early, mid next week. For, for timeline purposes, when was he here to visit, and when did he and Bill sit down and discuss how this would go in the future? Uh, I, I, I'm reluctant to give you the exact dates right now because I don't have a calendar in front of me. But uh, Coach Holgerson was here. Uh, to, to look at the campus, look at the facilities, you know, get a feel for uh, for the for the uh, uh, you know, for, for Morgantown, for the state. Uh, relatively short trip, a day trip, but uh, a nice trip nonetheless. And I, I can't remember exactly when when we when but, Coach Stewart, but it was it was I mean obviously after the season. Did Stewart play for the national championship? Did Coach Stewart play for the national championship? No, no, 